All right, everyone, we are back live again. Another Brap rant. I figured, why the hell not? It's Tuesday, right? Two for Tuesdays. Two for Tuesdays. So let me do a quick sound check, guys. I need to make sure that... I figured, why the hell not? It's Tuesday, right? Yeah, okay. You guys can hear me perfectly. All right, perfect. So I uh, want to do... Yeah, I figured, why not do another quick Brap rant? Uh, if you missed today's rant, uh, we had uh, Worry Word on. Uh, Worry has been a guest on Brap before. Uh, it was great to have him on. Just just great dude. Just great gamer, great guy. Uh, enjoy his videos, uh, his his humor as it relates to gaming and things related to the gaming community uh, that he makes light of. That he makes light of. And again, uh, just a great conversation. We talked about uh, today's really big news. The Wired magazine had an article about uh, PlayStation hardware. They detailed uh, some of the things that the PlayStation Five is going to be capable of doing. And one of those things was hardware ray tracing, which a lot of people thought that Sony was going to use a software-based ray tracing approach to the PlayStation 5, thus giving the Xbox Scarlet, which will have a hardware-based ray tracing, uh, giving the Xbox uh, a potential advantage in that regard. And that's not going to be the case now. Mark Cerny made that a point to say, hey, no, we're not doing software-based ray tracing. We're actually going to do hardware. So it's a lot of interesting news, a lot of great stuff. Um, uh, game, game Over HD says the games will be different just like this generation. Yeah, we're going to talk about that because I wanted to kind of, um, as Worry and I were talking earlier today, you know, as we as we talked about a little bit about the, the hardware, we know that both consoles are going to uh, have very similar architecture, be using... Ryzen-based CPUs, Navi-based GPUs from AMD. I don't think we're going to have a, a situation like last generation uh, where we had, you know, like resolution gate. <laughs> I don't, I think these consoles are going to be more alike than they are different. And so, you know, I want to talk about what, so what's, what ultimately, I guess, what's going to differentiate these consoles from one another? I mean, what what's, what's going to be the differentiator for these consoles? That's, you know, it's, I don't think any console is going to have one, you know, one huge advantage. And it's Sony with the PlayStation 4 obviously had the advantage with resolution than the Xbox One did at the time. And now uh, Microsoft is king of the resolution wars, if you will, with the release of the Xbox One X. And that powerful console... Uh, Game of Rage, he says, Dan Brat, this is your third live stream in one day. Did the PS5 have you scared? No, PlayStation 5 does not have me scared. I'm actually really excited about the PlayStation 5. One of the things that Worry and I were talking about, Worry had asked me earlier today, hey, are you going to get PlayStation 5 and Xbox Scarlet day one? And I said, definitely a PlayStation 5 day one. And I'm probably not going to buy a Scarlet because uh, I just don't... I, just don't need to right now. I, I have a. I just bought a PC rig with a uh, Ryzen base CPU and a NVIDIA RTX twenty seventy GPU. Uh, I just don't. I don't need to. Um, I, doesn't mean that I won't at some point uh, go out and buy a buy an Xbox Scarlet. I just don't see the need right now, especially with still being tied to the Xbox ecosystem through uh, Game Pass for PC. So. So just kind of, guys, just kind of recap the news from earlier today. Uh, as I said, Wired Magazine had an article out talking about PlayStation 5. The big takeaways from, the big takeaway for me was that PlayStation 5 is going to have hardware-based ray tracing. And the DualShock 5 controllers, now Mark Cerny didn't officially say they're going to call the new controllers for the PlayStation 5 the DualShock 5. But I think you guys, I think we don't look, I think we can all safely assume that it's going to be called the DualShock 5. I don't think there's any, I think we're, we're all, I think it's a safe bet. <laughs> Giving the history, their track record of naming that controller, the DS3, the DS4, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. It's going to be the DualShock 5. It's going to have, it's going to have a haptic control responses to it. Uh, which is really interesting because it's going to be very 
it's going to be it's going to try to create i think um another level of immersion if you will with the player and how they um kind of how they're interacting with the game or the games that they're playing um and so the haptic controls is interesting. So I'm trying to find the, um, give me a second, guys. I got to pull up this article again. I just had it up because I do want to talk. Oh, the SSD was something else that Mark Cerny talked about. Faster, faster loading times. Uh, Blue Point, the developer Blue Point talked about the SSD and what they'll be able to do with that. Guys, by the way, if you haven't checked out this article, please go to wired.com. You can find the article up there. Uh, definitely read some of Blue Point's feedback. Blue Point is a game developer, which I think Sony is Sony buying them. They're working on an exclusive PlayStation Five. We know that Jim Ryan wants to acquire more studios for Sony. <laughs> What's going on, Born Distracted? Welcome back again. Born Distracted was here earlier, so I appreciate it, brah. Coming by and hanging out again. But Sony talked about the installation of data, or I should, the installation of games. And how you could, uh, you know, if a game has multiplayer, single player, you could choose which, what part of the game you want to choose to install. And he talked about updates to the UI. But the haptic controls was really cool because they talked about, like, uh, give an example of the, 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 the gentleman who wrote, the journalist who wrote the article, for a wire talked about trying the prototype PlayStation five controller. And he said they, they put him into a map where he was traversing through different platform levels. And there was a number of like different surfaces. He said, um, all the surfaces gave like a distinct feeling, uh, that gave him like this surprisingly immersive, uh, tactical experience. He said, sand felt slow and sloggy. Mel felt, mud felt slow and soggy. He said on ice, the high frequency response made to the thumb, the thumbsticks, Really feel like really felt like his character was gliding, jumping to a pool. He said he got the sense of resistance of the water, and on a wooden bridge, he described a bouncy sensation that he picked up through the controllers. So that's really cool. That kind of that kind of feedback through controllers is something that um, I I think is really cool and a, and a feature that I'm certainly looking forward to. Uh, Tech Money says Sony and Microsoft both need to lock down their second party developers. Uh, I'm sure that that's probably in the works behind the scenes. Sure, Blue Point is one of them. They, I, I have heard that uh, Microsoft, in fact, will have the marketing rights to Call of Duty next console generation, which is big because uh, Rory and I talked about the optics of or the perception of the casual gaming market and the impact that has on gaming consoles. And I think that's going to be a big, 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 big addition for Microsoft to get Call of Duty uh, back on the Xbox or having the marketing rights for Call of Duty. Remember, they had it for the 360. And it did very well, the 360. Had a tremendous impact, I think, on the sales of the 360 console. So, so those are, those are some of the just quick takeaways from uh, that article on Wired. And we got a release date. Uh, it's going to be releasing holiday 2020. They didn't give us an exact date, but at least we know that, in fact, this console, like many of us speculated, is going to be releasing... 2020 uh tech money says i hope sony buys housemark yeah housemark would be a great developers for sony to pick up they have um housemark um has really put out some really good games they're known for their that that twin stick uh, uh, sh uh twin stick based shooters uh like resogun mm -hmm. i can't remember what other games they made i have to look them up but um i should know this because they're actually one of the um I think one of the better uh, developers, smaller developers, uh, this console generation. Oh, hold on just a sec here, guys. I'm going to pull up. Yeah, so I think Resogun came out in 2013. Uh, Next, Machi Next Machina came out in 2017. Uh, they're currently working on storm drivers. I don't think that's come out yet. Uh, 
But yeah, I think Housemark would be uh, a great pickup for them, Tech Money. Uh, Gamer HD says, listen to what Sony has done this generation for me as a gamer. I'll be damned if Microsoft gets any of my money next generation in, in Call of Duty and COD, Wheels Day 2, PlayStation. Why would Activision go to that platform? Uh, you know, uh, money. Uh, it comes down to money. Who's going to give them the most money for... Uh, look, they, the Activision, uh, they're going to sell games on either platform, on both platforms. They, they know that. They're going to sell... A lot of Call of Duty on Xbox. They're going to sell a lot of Call of Duty games on PlayStation 5. They're going to sell Call of Duty games on um, PC. And so, you know, hey, I, if, 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 if Microsoft uh, backs up the Brinks trucks to Activision and they offer more money than Sony, I'd be, Activision's not going to say no. They're in the business to make money. They're a for-profit organization. Of course they're going to take the money. Um, you know, so... Uh, Mr. Twister says, Housemark confirmed they are working on a AAA game. They are. I, is that AAA game? So I know, that, Mr. Twister, I know they said they were going to they're going to get away from what they what they're known for. Their, um, you know, their twist, their Twitch based shooters like Resogun. They're going to get away from those kind of games and try to make bigger games. Um, and I know they're working on Storm Drivers, which is a bigger bigger game than they've typically made. Uh, Mr. says you should have visited them not long ago and called them magicians. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe they're working on a uh, PlayStation Five um, yeah, exclusive. Could be. Who knows? Who knows? All right. So earlier I talked about that these consoles are, are in terms of hardware, are going to have you know pretty much the same guts. Um, they're probably going to be closer in power. And um, uh, Mr. Schwister, I'll, I'll have to check that out, man. I'll have to Google and see what they're working on AAA or read some of those interviews. I appreciate you sharing that, man, because I haven't really kept up with Housemark um, probably since the announcement of – really, probably since the announcement of Storm Drivers. <laughs> so it's, it's been a little while since I've kept up with the, kept up with the good uh, developers over at Housemark. But... So – I do believe, like, just based on what we know, what we know, guys, for argument's sake, Ryzen CPU, Navi CP, GPU, AMD, uh, they're both going to have SSDs. They're both going to uh, do hardware-based ray tracing. They're both going to have online multiplayer services, video games, yada, 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 yada. So what ultimately is going to differentiate these two consoles at the at the launch of next generation? And as I said, this console generation, we had Resolution Gate. Remember that? Remember that whole console war nonsense of Resolution Gate and the whole biased media stuff, which I'm, I'm not going to get into because I beat that horse dead. And by the way, I don't, I don't want to deviate here, but I'm, I'm kind of... So... <laughs> So I, uh, what I call the uh, Brap Studios, I have my uh, TV here set up with my, my uh, Brap Studios, guys, in case you don't know, doubles as a man cave slash gaming room for, for Mr. Enrique. And I'm sitting here at my PC desk and uh, I'm looking at the TV and there's all this stuff about uh, our President Donald Trump. And, and not to get, look, guys, not to derail here. Let me, let me just get this off my mind. Fuck it. I, can we just come to the realization that maybe the Donald Trump experiment is gone bad? It's just not going to work out. It's just, you know, look, I, I'm not trying to, I, I never really talk politics here on BRAP, but this just came up because uh, my TV's on right now. And they're talking about some of his more recent tweets. You know, look, and I'm, look, uh, full disclosure, I'm, I'm a registered Republican. I uh, tend to, uh, I've leaned that way, um, but you know, I, I tend to be kind of 50 50. I would describe myself as a liberal Democrat or a liberal Republican conservative Democrat. And Tech Money says, Yeah, he's making our country look crazy. He is. So, and, and this is my thing. Like, let's just look. Let's just admit, guys, it's a failed experiment. Look, it just didn't work out. I'm just going to leave it at that. This guy's not, he's not, re he's not representing the brand, if you will. Trump is not representing the brand, if you will, in a good light. He just isn't. He just isn't. And I'll leave it at that. And the other thing I want to talk about real quick, um, 
Because I, I big shout out to my man OBJ to Don. Guys, I am a Redskins fan. Let me just tell you something. It just it fucking sucks to be a Redskins fan right now. It 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 just sucks. Um, and uh, we fired another head coach. I think we've had. I think the under Dan Snyder, the twenty years of ownership. I think he's had head, eight head coaches. He's had like three winning seasons, three trips to the playoffs in twenty years. The problem isn't the coaching. The problem is Dan Snyder. If we could only fire Dan Snyder, the Redskins franchise would be better off. He's the problem. Bruce Allen's the problem. Till those guys are gone, I don't. I don't see any hope for the Redskins franchise. Or distracts his imagine being a Jets fan. Dude, I know what it's like. I know, I know the feeling. I'm there with you, man. I'm there with you. So, all right. I went off on a off the rails there. But I don't think these consoles are going to be really that different. I mean, look, I, again, AMD, Ryzen CPUs, Navi GPUs. Dietrich says, I feel your pain coming from a Broncos fan. Yeah, but Dietrich, at least you guys won a championship more recently, man. You guys have won. Uh, you guys have won some championships, three Super Bowls, and one recently. Did Born Distracts just bring on the XFL? By the way, it's funny. The uh, where I used to work in downtown Washington D.C. Uh, across from my old office is I have colleagues that still work for this company I used to work for. Across from the old office I was at, uh, there the X the Washington D.C. XFL office is open. Now I don't know if it's a lobbying arm or. If it's offices for a DC franchise for the XFL, I don't know what it is. Anyhow. So, again, I think these consoles are going to be more alike than they are different. So, I, what's going to differentiate these consoles from each other? What What are the fanboys going to argue about? <laughs> what, that's why That's why on my, um, <laughs> on my thumbnail I put console wars are over. Because what are, what, are, what are the fanboys going to argue about? I wonder, guys. Like, what are they going to argue about? They can't argue. They potentially probably won't be able to argue res- resolution. They were arguing who's going to have the better ray tracing. That was debunked by Mark Cerny today. Board Distracted says SSD size. Is that what we're coming down to, Board Distracted? We're, that fanboys are going to start saying, oh, my SSD is bigger than yours. It's going to be a big dick measuring contest. <laughs> or, or more we... <laughs> Maybe start doing benchmark tests on their consoles and they'll start comparing the the results. Uh, board distraction says size matters. Yeah, I, I can't argue that, sir. I can't argue that size matters when it comes to SSD size. I'm not going to argue that point, sir, because um, I have a 250 gig SSD, internal SSD. And yep, Dietrich says they're going to argue the best controller. Yeah, they, they probably will. They probably will. Uh, I th- I think, you know, it's interesting. I I like both controllers actually. They're you know they're going to argue battery life. That's what it's going to be. The uh, Xbox, the Xbox fanboys um, and PlayStation fanboys are going to say argue over batter- battery life. Which which next gen console dies faster than the other? That's going to be the argument. Which one has a longer battery life? You know what? I fa- fanboys are probably. Best HDR. Born Distractor says, Born Distractor says, Best HDR. I don't know, man. Mr. Twister, yeah, man. Send me some stuff about House, House Mark on Twitter, bro. I really appreciate that. Rezo Gun was a damn good game, by the way. Hazard Man says, Xbox controller would be the best again. I don't know about that, Hazard Man. I think that's, um, I think that's subjective. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying that the, uh, look, here's the thing. I like both controllers. I think that the Xbox One controller works well for certain games uh, and doesn't work well for other games. Like I don't like for like Twitch based games like uh Sick Row, let's say, or Dark Souls, I don't like the Xbox controller. Um uh, I, I I feel like the Dual Shock 4 is a better controller for Sekiro. Uh, I just felt like the thumb thumbsticks were a little more responsive for that game. Um you know I, I just Devil May Cry 5 is another game that I felt played better for me on the uh, DualShock 4. Now, again, guys, it's all subjective. I mean, some of this might not even matter to you. Some people may say, you know what? I don't care. I'm, I'm okay with either controller. 
But I do find, uh, at least in my opinion, that there's some games that um, that are just more comfortable for me that I feel play better on the Xbox One controller versus the DualShock Four. Like for I like like I like I'm playing Destiny Two right now. I'm uh, playing it on my PC. And by the way, Destiny Two on PC. I was so cool story, guys. So um, I reconnected with uh, two guys that um, I used to. Uh, when I was an Xbox Live beta tester 18 years ago, that's crazy. I can't believe that's been 18 years since I beta tested Xbox Live. Uh, there's two. There, I met a lot of people uh, on the beta on Xbox Live that I stayed in touch with over the last 18 years. Uh, but there's two guys, though, believe it or not, that I actually hadn't game with in a long time, and just started getting. And 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 actually, one of them I reconnected with because he was listening to the Brat podcast. He started listening to Iron Lords. Big shout out to the IOP. He was listening to the Iron Lords podcast, and then. Uh, he discovered uh, Brap through watching ILP, and lo and behold, I'm like, wait a minute, that's that's one bad mother, that's you, okay? So, like, I knew him. But it's cool, last night I uh, got to play with him and uh, uh, another gamer that I met, I met 18 years ago on Xbox Live as a beta tester, and we were playing Destiny 2, just having a good time. But, uh, but I'll say this, uh, Destiny 2 on the Xbox One X is a different experience than on PC. Uh, I will say the PC is the better experience. Um, you know, higher frame rates, better textures. Yeah, all that good stuff. But anyhow, I digress. Um, but back to the controller. I, back to the issue of the controllers. I, I think it's 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 probably preference too. Like I said, there's, cert, there's certain games that I prefer uh, on the uh, PlayStation 4, DualShock 4. Mm-hmm. Certain games I prefer using the Xbox One controller. Uh, Hazardman says it's not the best PS controller. That's Scruff Pro is based off of guess what Xbox controller. I can't play shooter with the DS. Yeah, I don't. I don't like the shoot. I don't like shooters with the DualShock. That's what I'm saying. Like there's certain games, certain genres too, that I prefer one controller over the other. Uh, Z Black Rider says my hands cramped the first year of using the Xbox controller. A hey, uh, Z Black Rider, you should have. And I don't know if you're around back then playing games. You should have tried playing on the the Duke controller on the OG Xbox. <laughs> Yeah, like that's that's how I played Halo, uh, the first time. DJ says PlayStation best for fighters, hands down. The X Pack D Pad ain't it. Yeah, I would agree with that. I I like the uh, Dual Shock, the D Pad for shoot for uh, for fighting games for sure. Javier McCann said Destiny is trash. Stop it, sir. So, I mean, like, what what are fanboys going to argue about next console generation? We're probably not going to have resolution gate. Both consoles will probably do 4K, 60 frames a second. And may, maybe they'll argue about who hits 60 frames more consistently or who's using uh, checkerboard rendering techniques to get to 4K, which I don't think is a big fucking deal, to be honest with you. You know, I would take checkerboard rendering and higher frame rates any day. Like, I currently game on a 2K monitor, but I have higher frame rates with ultra on ultra settings. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's not a big deal. Uh, Buck Rogers said podcasting again. Nice. Yes, sir. I am podcast. I figured why not, man? It's a big news day. Remember guys, by the way, we're not going to have uh, a brap tomorrow. Uh, we're going to do brap and actually uh, Buck Rogers. I'm actually breaking in my blue Yeti mic. That's why I'm doing this too. Kind of breaking in a little bit. D truth agrees. We'll have the year. You two stop. Destiny is not trash. Although, I do tend to have a love-hate relationship with Destiny. I think at some point, I'll probably be like, this game is trash. But uh, real quick, guys. Yeah, we're not going to have a uh, a brap tomorrow night at our regularly scheduled time, Wednesday, 9 p.m. We're going to move it to Thursday, this week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then next week, we're going to have brap on Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So... Uh, just have some schedule conflicts and just move around the times for this week and next. So just take note of that. But uh, guys, do me a favor. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate it. Want to get the uh, those likes up. Just take note of that. But uh, guys, do me a favor. Hit that like. We have... Um... Anyhow, um, so it's going to be interesting. I don't know... And guys, by the way, uh, if you haven't done so already, please tweet the link out to this Brap rant. Let's get some more people in here. Um, 
And guys, by the way, uh, if you haven't done so already, please tweet the link out to this Brap rant. Let's get some more people in here. Um, and... All right, guys. Sorry about that. Um, my son just walked in the room. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing, Daddy? Are you podcasting again? All right, Mr. Richards, a dev that joined Housemark said on Twitter, join our very exciting and fresh AAA project. I can honestly say that after Control, this is the most intriguing concept I've seen in a while. Oh, okay. All right, Mr. Twister, thank you for that, that insight of Housemark. Uh, Javier McKay says, do you know why Destiny's trash? Because they have no innovation. They don't try. They don't have any more new enemy types. With they have so much to do in space, they can do whatever they want. Aliens, everything. Uh, yeah, you know what? I I would agree with that to an extent. I I do like the enemies, but I could see how the enemies do feel recycled. I I get that. You know, and they they, they you know, now we have you know the the uh, the hive are my favorite uh, enemy types in, in in Destiny two, but now we have like the what is it the nightmare hives or whatever they're called. I forget what the fuck they're called. But I, I see your point, though, Javier. I, I, I get that. I'd like to see newer threats come from outer space. <laughs> that would be that'd be a welcome addition to Destiny. It is, maybe maybe that's in the works. I mean, that, that could be something potentially. Who knows? Um, so I'm thinking, like, how else are the fanboys going to argue or war about? So I think the console wars might be over. Maybe, maybe not. Or is it going to become streaming wars? Maybe they're going to argue about, you know what, that's it. It's going to be streaming. Who has the better streaming service? Oh, xCloud, you can play games everywhere, but Sony, you can't do that. You got PlayStation now, it sucks, blah, 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 blah. Anyhow, I will say this. I, I think the biggest differentiator, that's I think the thing that's really going to differentiate the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, I think it's going to come down to two things. And, and Warrior and I talked about this earlier. I think it's going to be one, I think it's going to be games, obviously games. Content is important. I don't care what anyone says, guys. Exclusives matter. Exclusives are very important. It's very important. There's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Exclusives matter. Especially if you think about services and how exclusives impact services. Like no one is look, guys, no one is no one's signing up to to no one's subscribing to Netflix to watch reruns of Seinfeld. You're pre- I mean, if, if you're going to watch, if you're going to subscribe to Netflix, uh, you're probably going to subscribe because you might be interested in something like Stranger Things, right? You know, if you if you subscribe to HBO, you're not subscribing because you want to see, you know, Captain America, Winter Soldier. You're probably subscribing because you want to see shows like, well, Game of Thrones. It's not. Uh, just wrapped up, but you get it. You, you want to see some of the exclusive programming that HBO has to offer. And the rest of it's just icing on the cake. Uh, Burger Boy says, next gen fanboys battle should be about the best and most content. And uh, Sip, Sifo, Sip, Sifo Poetic X Initiative says Content Wars. D Truth says there's too many games for me to commit to Destiny Plus. I didn't appreciate having to keep buying content. I I hear you, man. Uh, X Initiative says Microsoft needs more studios. How, I don't know how, how many more studios do they need. They just bought a bunch of them. I think they they need to get those studios up and running, get them pumping out content. I think before maybe they buy some additional studios. Who knows? Z Black Rider says I don't care about exclusives. Okay. That's fine. That's fair. Not everyone cares about them, but that doesn't change the fact that they're still the lifeblood and the differentiator for consoles. You got to remember something: consoles at the beginning of every generation are sold to guess who? That small user base, that ten percent, which is hey, what's going on, BitCloud? That ten percent of the market, which is hardcore gamers. We we are the early adopters. We're the ones that are going to go out and buy. Xbox Scarlet at launch, PlayStation 5 at launch. We're going to sign up for the Stadia Founders Edition. That's what we're going to do because we're hardcore gamers. Casual market, not so much. But we want to see the latest and greatest, the best graphics, the newest content. 
Next initiative wants to know, do, do I think GTA Next will be exclusive to PlayStation? Uh, I don't think so. I don't see that happening. I could be wrong, but no, I, I think that's highly likely. Not a, I, I don't see that happening. I don't. But, you know, nothing nothing surprises me anymore, but uh, my personal opinion, I, I don't see that happening. So, All right, guys. Um, so I think I think content's obviously going to be important at the, at the launch of next console generation. I think that's going to be the big differentiator. Um, I think, I think in terms of services, I mean, I think I got to give the nod to Microsoft coming in with a little bit of an edge with, with services. I mean, they, they look, they got game pass game pass is a, I think whether or not it's for you is one thing, but as a service, if you just look at it as a service and what it's offering consumers, it's actually a pretty damn good deal. You know, I got mine for one dollar. I'm locked in for two years. Can't beat that. Two years, I'm locked in for Ultimate Game Pass. It's a big reason why I bought my PC. Because now I have Xbox Game Pass on my Xbox and my PlayStation or my PC. So, super excited about that. It's a win-win for me. So, I got to, you know, in terms of services, I, I got to give Microsoft the advantage here. They're going to be beta testing xCloud soon. Uh, I don't know if you guys have signed up for that. I've signed up. I have T-Mobile in an Android phone, so I am. I'm hoping for the best. I'm a, I'm over here saying, "Hey, pick me!" I was an Xbox Live beta tester. Let me beta test this joint too. Anyhow, so I think I think in that regard, um, I think that you know, but but I will say this. We do know there's one big exclusive that's launching on the Xbox Scarlet. It's going to be a cross-gen release, but we know that Halo is going to be launching with the Xbox Scarlet. Now, I hope, I hope this, and I look, guys, I was not impressed with the E3 trailer. I just wasn't. I, I'm sorry. It just didn't seem like a true next-gen Halo to me, you know. Um... Z Black Rider says, uh, Microsoft hardware should be good out the gate too. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think, I think both are going to be very, I think both PlayStation 5 and Xbox Scarlet are both going to launch out of the gate with good hardware. That's what I'm saying. I don't think there's going to be a big difference in terms of power with these two consoles. So ultimately, what's going to differentiate these two consoles? I think it's going to, again, it's going to come down to games and services. What's up, Diff Lloyd? So, so I again, I, in terms of services, I got to give that 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 lead to Microsoft, that edge to Microsoft because with Game Pass you're getting first party games day and date. They got a lot of great third party support with games and Game Pass. Uh, you have the option of taking Game Pass with you on PC. Uh, and look, not at PlayStation now. I mean, look, it, it's. We, we know that Sony was the kind of the first into that cloud streaming services. Uh, they just didn't talk about it a lot. It was kind of something that was uh, on the back burner for them, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, I actually like that, that Sony focuses on the platform, the hardware, the PlayStation 5 or 4. It talks about games and everything else is kind of just an option. I like that. Uh, but that's me. But I do think that Sony with the PlayStation, I think, I think they're pivoting. I think this. I think what we saw last week with Sony announcing, "Hey, we're dropping the price of PlayStation now. We're going to put games like uh, God of War, uh, God of War in there, um, Infamous Second Son. Uh, we got GTA V in there. Uh, these games you can download. They're available now. Uh, they're going to be. I don't like that they're only. And this is the thing that I don't like about um, how they've what they're doing with PlayStation now. I think this is where an area of improvement for Sony at least." You're putting in God of War, and no one's no one's arguing that God of War is a is a good game, right? But most of us, the hardcore games, have already played that, so fine, whatever. But why leave it on there till January? The game's only going to be available on PlayStation now till January. The game's two years old. Why not just keep it on there? Now, we've had Matt Piscatello on the show from MPD, and Matt was saying that there's a correlation between. Games selling better and games being on Game Pass. There's this longevity factor that factors in 
with games that make it on Game Pass after after they've been released full retail. Uh, well, we don't know, and what Matt said is we don't know how what the impact on Game Pass is going to be on games that release day and date or early, as the case with uh, Gears Five Ultimate. What the impact's going to be? So, but we know that at least when games release after the fact and then get put into Game Pass, uh, there is a positive correlation with an increase in sales uh, as a result of uh, player increased player engagement. So, so I mean that's so, and I think the X Cloud thing could potentially be an advantage. I mean, I, I possibly. I don't. I don't know if that's going to be something that really resonates with a lot of hardcore gamers. Uh, I think. I think the trick with Microsoft and trying to get XCloud, trying to get people on mobile gaming, is getting people to pay. Mobile, mobile gamers, guys, you got to remember something. Mobile gamers do not pay. They don't pay to play. They get free content, and then they may buy, you know, things like microtransactions and stuff like that. But they are releasing with Halo Infinite, so that's that's a plus for them. It's, and if I was Microsoft, guys, I would go out there and I'd say, hey, you know what? This is the first Halo game to launch simultaneously with a new Xbox console since the OG Xbox. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. You have your flagship, big tentpole franchise, Master Chief. Although I think they should kill Master Chief, but that's another discussion. I think that uh, that's a big deal. I think Microsoft should be screaming from the hills. Hey, we got a Halo Infinite. It's our first Halo since... It's the first Halo launching with a new Xbox console since the OG. This is great. Yeah, they should do that. They should absolutely do that. And I think that's a, it's a big plus for them. I think that that's going to get a lot of um, uh, gamers, especially fans of... Halo, excited. Now, I, it's it's hard to sit there and say, well, what is PlayStation going to have? Because, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I We don't know what PlayStation 5 is going to have at launch. You know, Halo Infinite's the only confirmed game we know for a fact that's going to be there at launch. Now, you got to believe that uh, The Last of Us 2 is going to be a cross-gen title, so that's probably going to be make its way on the PlayStation 5, and that is a big title for Sony to have, too. Uh, perhaps Ghost of Tsushima. I've heard that. I've heard rumors that Ghost of Tsushima will be a launch title for PlayStation Five, but we'll we'll see. We we don't have any confirmation on that just yet. So, because I really think at the end of the day, it's going to come down to games and features. I think that's going to be the big differentiator for uh, these these game consoles, and it's going to be content wars, as someone said. Uh, early earlier in the live chat. Gregor Von Doom says, I hope they kill Master Chief off the screen. Oh boy. <laughs> Burger Boy says, uh, they should make a Halo Infinite custom Scarlet console with release. Yeah, I dude, I agree with that, man. They should totally do that. They should totally do that. And Microsoft should go out and beat Game Pass down the throats of consumers. Especially the casual market. Like when I watch when I watch commercials for Gears Five, it says, "Oh, play play Gears Five on Game Pass." Well, what the fuck is Game Pass? I know what Game Pass is because I'm a hardcore gamer, but I'm a casual gamer and I stroll into Best Buy. I don't know what the fuck Game Pass is. I so I think I think Microsoft should beat Game Pass down the throats of consumers. <laughs> That's what I think. Think if you're Microsoft, you have this great off offering of services. Hopefully, the studios you the studios you have acquired, hopefully, they put out some good quality content because that's that's an area where I think Sony still has an advantage. If I think long game, I know I hear a lot of people say, "Oh, well, you know, Microsoft's got all these new studios. It's great." Well, I mean, that's fine, but I can't I can't judge these studios because I haven't seen the product. I haven't seen the end product. Now, I know Obsidian is a good studio. We've seen the work Obsidian's done in the past. You know, I we know that... Um, 
you know, I, I, I think like Double Fine is a good studio. Tim Schaefer, those guys. But, you know, Double Fine's kind of, it's, you know, they're a smaller studio. They kind of have a cult following. You know, most casuals don't know, don't know who Double Fine is or Psychonauts. You know, Psychonauts is a damn good game, but most people don't know who that game is or what that game is. Hell, most people probably don't even know who Tim Schaefer is. You know, we know about the talent over at Playground. We know that. We know the initiative is putting together, uh, a, a, you know, making a lot of hires, taking people out of some of Sony studios. But that's all, look, that's all fine and dandy. But at the end of the day, you get judged for your the end product, the work product that you put out, right? And so right now, a lot of this talk that I hear is kind of like the NFL draft every year. Oh, look at this guy. He ran a 4440. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, but we got to see him suit up and play. We actually got to see him suit up and play a game and play a season and see how that translates on the field. That's all I'm saying, guys. I'm not I'm not discrediting or saying that these studio acquisitions are not important. They are. They're really important. But we can't really make a sound judgment until we see what these studios crank out in terms of quality games. And and that's that's the deficit that I see uh, with Microsoft that their strength and they're playing to the strength right now as, as a company. Microsoft is a software services company. They're playing to that strength. And so that's what I'm saying. Xbox, X Cloud, you know, at the gate, I think that Microsoft has the advantage of services. Uh, but right now, in terms of games, I will say that because of what I know today about the PlayStation 5, because I can say to you, I know the kind of quality that Santa Monica is going to put out based on God of War. I know what uh, Guerrilla Games is going to put out based on Horizon Zero Dawn and the sequel to that game. I know what Naughty Dog can do. They just bought Insomniac. We know what Insomniac can do. And watch out, guys. Watch. I'm telling you, watch Insomniac or watch Sony announce next year, 2020, Sunset Overdrive 2. Mark my words, it's going to happen. And Jim Ryan is not done buying studios. So perhaps we could make the argument then that, um, I don't know, guys, maybe we could make the argument that Sony right now, you know, I would say Sony, I think, has the advantage right now in terms of content, in terms of games, video games, software. You know, in terms of first-party stuff. Uh, so I see that I see that as, as as that being an advantage for them, and perhaps that's going to be the differentiator. You know, maybe Microsoft has the better services next gen, and Sony continues with you know so so services, maybe not on the same par as Microsoft and X Cloud and Game Pass, but they're still hitting us with those big first party AAA bangers. Uh, Exodus is PlayStation launch titles. What's on the table? See, that's that's what I was saying earlier. I think the what we know at least is that Halo Infinite is 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 on the table for the Xbox Scarlet at launch. We don't know what Sony's bringing to the table at launch for PlayStation Five. Obviously, there's things out there, rumors, Ghost of Tsushima, um, from Sucker Punch, The Last of Us Two. Would be a, uh, uh, you know, a a cross generation release. Um, but I gotta say, guys, I I, I think that I think when it comes down to it, I, I think it's just gonna be. It's not going to be. It's. It, this is really going to be the content wars because again, the hardware is going to be so similar. I think if we fast forward into next gen, I think it's going to be which console has the mo- most robust services, streaming, whatever, uh, subscription based, uh, and then which console offers the best content. Yeah, you know, I think that's those are going to be the differentiators. I think that's what people are going to be talking about. It's not going to be about power anymore. Resolution. It's going to be about services and content. And I think you, I think that announcement, the PlayStation Now, is kind of that uh, shots fired. The acknowledgement that, hey, 
Google and uh, Microsoft aren't the only players in the streaming space or services space. We are too. And you heard Jim Ryan. He said, say, complacency, not going to do it. And I'm just paraphrasing what he's saying, but he's saying, look, the incumbent has never won the next console generation. And, you know, complacency is basically not acceptable. You got to like you got to like hearing that from Jim Ryan. They acknowledge the stumblings of other previous consoles that have ruled the roost and then next generation uh, have fallen back. It's happened. We've seen it time and time again. But I will say this, guys. I think this generation's different. I, you know, I've had this conversation with uh, Lord Cognito. Big shout out to my man Cognito and the ILP. I've had this conversation with him, and he talked about this on last Sunday's IOP. If you missed that, you should definitely check it out. Great show. Great, great episode. <laughs> Buck Rogers says, I hope to get whichever console has blast processing. <laughs> uh, Buck Rogers says, Xbox needs to get more Japanese games on its console. Dude, I would agree with that. I mean, like, that's that's my biggest frustration with Phil Spencer this console generation. Yes, you addressed the deficiencies in content with buying studios, but there were games that people wanted. We wanted another Blue Dragon. We wanted a sequel to Lost Odyssey. Come on, give us those games. People want it. We've been clamoring for a sequel to Mecha Salt forever. Hazard Man says, Why was dudes on podcast saying PlayStation 5 at software ray tracing without the facts? Um, you know, Hazard Man, I think that, um, that had to do, I think, with speculation that started in the media because Cerny didn't really answer that question the first time. And people speculate that the, that's because it might have software ray tracing. So, Z Black Rider says resolution is peak, but physics and AI will dominate next gen. I agree with that, sir. But I also think that, uh, again, this is the, thing where the xbox and playstation 5 are going to be pretty much identical in terms of hardware so i don't think we're going to see difference in terms of physics and ai which if that's the case place easy places even greater emphasis on having successful first party because as we know first party is the one that really really puts the shine on content on a platform typically first But it's going to be interesting. Next generation is going to be interesting. It's definitely going to be about content and services. And I think that's a fair discussion. It's better than resolution wars, for sure. Better than the whole media bias argument. Buck Rogers says, it's just nuts on Xbox One. The 360 was so good. The 360 was good. The 360 had a def- had defining franchises. And we didn't get that. That's why I think next generation, as long as these consoles are more alike than they are different, it is ever, it's even more important to have really strong first party content, to have a solid offering or options in terms of services, whether it's streaming, subscription based services, things like Game Pass. Maybe it's Sony tweaking PlayStation Now to to mirror up Game Pass a little bit more, which I think they should. You know, I don't know if they're going to, um, I see people say, oh, Sony, Sony's never going to, um, Sony's never going to release first party games day and date on PlayStation now. That, that may be the case today, but I, I would say guys, if that ever happened, I can't say that I would be surprised. Same people said that Sony would never put first party PS4 games on PS PlayStation now. And we ha- and we're seeing that. And Sony's been on record. Sean Lane's been on record trying to, you know, get attract the PC crowd. So I think you see Sony make inroads in that in that direction. Hazardman says they should, they will. Yeah, I mean, Hazardman, I I if PlayStation now, if Sony, look guys, if Sony puts, if Sony puts, um, games into Game Pass. Or not Game Pass, but games into PlayStation Now, first party games, day and date. Hey, hell, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I'm not going to complain at all. It's a great deal. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh my God, this is terrible. 
But I do wonder though. There, there is an argument. There is a conversation to be had about this. Again, I'm not a developer. I don't sit in these board meetings, so I don't know all the specifics. But my my only question is, I wonder how they sustain this. You know, and you got to believe that it's it's they're looking to make up the money that they would have made on you know sixty day retail, you know d- digital sales, retail sales of games selling for sixty dollars. They're probably looking to make that up on subscription, so it becomes value based. They gotta, they get, they need to offset that cost by getting more people to subscribe into the ecosystem or the service. But Roger says nobody's first party sells like Nintendo's. That's true, man. Nintendo's on a different beast, a different. They're just on a different level in that regard. So I don't know, guys. It's going to be interesting. I do think the console wars are over, though. We are now entering the content wars. Mm, yes. Content wars begun, have they? So, guys, I do want to go to one more, one more topic. One more topic here. Now, uh, one of the things that, that um, kind of piqued my interest in the article from Wired Magazine about PlayStation 5. They actually had... They had, um, they had Marco, Marco Thrush, who's the president of Bluepoint Games... And if you guys know Blue Point is Blue Point Games is a developer that does a lot of um, like they more recently worked on the uh, remaster of Shadow Shadow of Colossus. That's kind of their uh, their their niche, if you will, in the industry. They do a lot of remakes, remasters of games. But Shadow of the Colossus, by the way, the remake that Blue Point did of that game, phenomenal, totally phenomenal. And Shadow of Colossus, by the way, was just a game that was ahead of its time. And what the developer was really trying to do in terms of gameplay, mechanics, and physics. But this this remake is just, just masterful. It's just really great. Um and you know, and 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 he's talking about um how the SSD has him really excited. Uh he mentions that um you know how how they're kind of going back to the days of uh, cartridge gaming where things used to load instantaneously. That's that they're kind of going back to that with consoles. And um, it's interesting. So he says, so he says, so he does recognize. So basically Marco Thrush confirms that Blue Point's working on a big title right now for PlayStation 5. Now, what that title is, who knows? Now, he's, he basically said, I'll let you figure out the rest. <laughs> so he obviously, he's not giving any real concrete clues to what they're working on. But it begs the question, and we know Jim Ryan wants to acquire more studios. Is Sony going to buy Blue Point? I mean, they've had a they've had a, a, a history of working together. Um, we, we know the masterful job that Blue Point did with Shadow of the Colossus. Could this be the next purchase for that Sony that next studio Sony picks up? I mean, you know, a lot of us um, and we've talked about this on Brap. A lot of us have said, "Hey, we we want to see, we want to see Blue Point." make their own triple A game. We want to see them create a new IP because of the work that they've done on some of these remasters, remakes. And, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Like, I wonder, I'm like, wow, what if Spartan God says what, I think they bought blue point already. And that's what I'm thinking. Maybe what if they did, what if they bought them already? And they just haven't announced it. I mean, Marco Thrush, he's the president of Blue Point. He's like, hey, guys, we are working on something big. We're working on something big on the PlayStation 5. 
I'll let you guys figure it out. Now, there's there's tons of rumors going out there. There's rumors that they're working on a SOCOM remake. Um, I've heard SOCOM has been in the works for some time now for the PlayStation 5. Uh, but I've also heard that Gorilla is also working on the uh, reboot for SOCOM. If you guys... SOCOM was was definitely PlayStation's uh, PlayStation 2's most popular online game, multiplayer game at the time uh, when that game came out. Um, and there's, I think there's definitely, I, I can't give you a number. I can't say how many people want to see this game, but there's there's probably a, you know a, a, a following of, of hardcore SOCOM fans that want to see that game come back. And you know, Sony is is one of those uh, companies that will listen to the fans. You know, despite of how well a game sold. Uh, they'll they'll invest and, and, and release a title uh, because the fans want it at times. We've seen that. We've seen that pass from them. But I wonder. I wonder. Buck Rogers says even the PSP SOCOM games are great. Never played SOCOM on PSP. Never played it on PSP. But I, I tell you guys, if, if they pick up Blue Point, that's a solid, I think it's a solid acquisition. Solid acquisition. We they they are a talented studio. We've seen what they've done uh, in the past. And so now you add Blue Point, you add Insomniac to the stable of studios that Sony already has, and I I don't see them stopping. I think Jim Ryan, guys. I'm telling you, I think Jim Ryan. I, I've heard people compare him to Donnie Matrick. I don't think he's Don Matrick. I think that's ridiculous. I think he, um, but it's interesting. Blue Point is a, I mean, that's a pretty big get, I think, for them to work on a uh, exclusive. And, and they're not even being shy about it. They're saying, hey, we're working on something big for PlayStation 5. So, but it's interesting. See, this is the kind of stuff that really, so we know Blue Point's working on a game, right? We're getting a lot of news about PlayStation 5 now. And Sony hasn't even had a press conference to even talk about PlayStation 5 yet. But we're starting to get news about it. We're starting to get news about it. So I, I, I tell you guys, don't be surprised if we start seeing more or hearing more things or studios working on PlayStation 5 specific games. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jim Ryan, we hear some more studio acquisitions soon just based on what Jim Ryan has recently said his comments more recently after the uh, abrupt departure by Sean Layden, which is just interesting. By the way, guys, I, I don't think uh, that Sony is in trouble. I've, heard, I've seen some people say that. Oh, they lost so many people. They lost Adam House, Adam or Andrew House, Adam Boyes, Sean Layden. But they, they, have, they have lost those people, but they have been consistent with... The, the 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 quality of content that's come out. Where hey, where is the fabulous Apple man Worry? Where is he? <laughs> Worry, by the way, Worry is 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 Apple biased, but he admits it though. It's a beauty of it. He just hey, I'm Apple biased. <laughs> but I do think, guys, next generation, it's going to be as it should be. Content, it will be king. Content is going to be the thing that really differentiates next generation consoles. It's not going to be resolution. It's going to be content. And, and like I said, and services. But it's going to be content. And I think right now, if I, look, if I'm a betting man, I think that, and this goes back to my conversation with Lord Cognito, where he said, hey, Every console generation is a clean slate. That's true. Every console generation, every console generation, has been a clean slate, and we've seen that. I've seen it. I've lived it for the last thirty years, thirty plus years that I've been gaming. I'm not so sure that even with the clean slate that Sony will not be the market leader next console generation. And I'm only saying that, guys. This is my opinion. Speculation. I, I just think so because I think this was the generation where you had to really lock gamers into your ecosystem. I think that's why you see the push for things like Game Pass ecosystem. 
You think you, why are you seeing Sony starting to pivot towards the end of the console generation and announce backwards compatibility for the PlayStation 4 on the PlayStation 5? Because I don't think a lot of people are going to make that switch because they're tied into the ecosystem. We didn't have ecosystems when I was growing up like that. You know, we didn't have backwards compatibility per se. You know, I think we had it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Xbox 360 may have been somewhat backwards compatible. I could be wrong about that. I think the PlayStation, I think the PlayStation um, 3 was backwards compatible with the 2, at least some games. But anyhow, I, I think with the option, the ability to take your last generation library with you, to take your friends list with you, To get games as a service, to get games day and date, or to get games via download through subscription service where you don't have to pay $60 to play a game. I think, honestly, I think that it's going to be a hard sell for people to switch platforms next console generation because you're asking them, you're asking them to move. You're asking them to leave their house, to move, to leave their goods behind, potentially. If they're that invested, but I don't, I don't. So I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it's a clean slate. I think this generation is different. I think this was the generation where you needed to lock in your user base into your ecosystem, and I, I don't see, I don't see. We're talking about a hundred million PlayStation Four sold. I don't see. 30 million PlayStation 4 owners defecting. I, I, I don't see that happen. I could be wrong. Stranger things have happened. Z Black Rider says, I switched midway this gen. It's easy. Yeah. I, I, I'm not saying nobody's going to switch. But I don't think everyone... I don't think... I don't think it's going to change much. I still think Sony's going to be the market leader next console generation. And that's not to say that Microsoft's not going to do well with the Xbox. I'm sure they will. I mean, the, the, the pie is so big now at this point. I mean, look at it. We have three platforms, three consoles that are doing well. You know, so I'm not saying that because Sony's the market leader in X console generation that Xbox is, gets an automatic L. No. I just don't. I, I don't see things drastically shifting to the point where uh, Xbox is ahead of Sony uh, as the market leader next gen. I, I just don't see it happening. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I, I don't see it happening. I just think. I think a lot of people are tied in to that ecosystem now. And uh, to uh, and to see Black Rider's point. I don't, I don't think any. That doesn't mean that everyone's going to stay tied in. Um, but you know I. I I think a lot of people, I think it's going to be hard for a lot of people to leave the Sony platform, especially if we know, they people know. I, when I said, when, when God of War came out, I said they sold PlayStation 5s. That's the advantage Sony has too coming into this generation, that mind share. The mind share of, hey, you know what? We have God of War. You're going to get an exclusive to God of War. And if you play God of War, you're like, holy shit, I can't wait. That game was badass. I can't wait for God of War 2. I can't wait to see what happens with with Kratos and his son. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens with in Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn. Buck Rogers says, people will switch if the launch times are weak and the other one has a killer lineup. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's enough, that could happen. That could happen. Hazardman says, man, I can guarantee next gen for Xbox will be better than Xbox One generation. Uh, yeah, Hazardman, I would agree with that. I, I think I, I don't think you can get any lower right now uh, than the Xbox One has this console generation for that brand. This is their worst console generation ever. Mm-hmm. 
But you know, um, yeah, may, maybe book book. Maybe you have a point. Maybe you know a killer lineup. But I, I don't. I don't know. I don't see that happening. I don't see it happening. I think uh, the mindshare, that ecosystem. You may have some hardcore gamers. I think that if they see a killer lineup for Xbox, will go out and buy a Scarlet. You know, I know guys that um, abandoned Xbox One for PlayStation Four. And when the Xbox One X came out, bought an Xbox One X. But again, guys, I think it's going to come down really to content. I think that's going to be the big differentiator. I really think so. Um, and I think that's that's obviously why, I mean, I think outside of Game Pass, I think that's, that's a, probably a big reason why you see Microsoft investing in the studios that they're investing in uh one to feed game pass and one because hey content is going to be what gets us back into the game if you will Sammy prescott jr says next gen will be fun i'm just hoping for more games will support cross play it's one amazing reason it's one of the main reasons i still play certain games on console yeah i i, I hope we see more cross play cross progression i love that there's cross progression on destiny 2 Love it. It's a it's one of my favorite features of the game. The only thing, Bungie, if you're listening, the only thing you need to do is implement crossplay so I can I don't have to get on Xbox One X and play Destiny at a lower frame rate and muddier textures. <laughs> PC Master Race. All right, gamers, we are about over an hour now. I wanted to keep this at about an hour. I really appreciate everyone's time, by the way. Thank you guys for uh for coming back. Some of you guys came back for a second helping of Brap today. So I really appreciate that. Mad love for everyone. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me that you guys are here hanging out with me, listening to me ramble on about video games, you know, shooting the shit with you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, but also remember guys that we, uh, we are not going to be live tomorrow at 9 PM Eastern standard time. We're moving the regular Brap podcast to uh thursday this week at 9 p.m eastern standard time so you don't want to miss that we're gonna get b money gaming forte eric jackson so i don't think slow gonna be able to join us big shout out to slow mo um we're gonna be talking more about yeah the news relate to sony's playstation 5 and some of the details we got today uh, we're gonna have some other gaming related news to talk about as well on thursday so um just keep an eye out for that link. I'll tweet it out probably tomorrow. Um, and uh, come hang out with us Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Guys, hit that like button. Subscribe. Tell your friends about us. We appreciate the support. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Catch you next. Catch you on Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, go to the live chat here. I got... Uh... Oh, thank you, Hazard Man. Hasbro says, I think Xbox will have a great lineup, but it will be based on Halo and Forza Motorsport. Uh, well. <laughs> Let's, hey, who, may, maybe they surprise us. Maybe Microsoft surprises us and drops, can you imagine if they drop Fable as a launch? What? <laughs> I still won't go out and buy Scarlet because I'll be able to play Fable on my PC. <laughs> but whatever, it's not the point. That's not the point. All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. Mad love for everyone in the live chat. Appreciate your opinions, your comments. Remember, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. We'll catch you guys on Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a special edition of BRAP. And uh, other than that, everyone have a great rest of the day. We'll see you on Thursday night. Peace.